So at, down here, there's an icon that looks like a little mini version of the board. All right, you just click on that once. A uh, couple different things. First thing I'll show you is you can do an on-screen remote control. So if you lose the remote, or if the batteries die, you're not dead in the water. Or if I gave you the remote, because it's, you know, I'm having people in the, exactly. So I can actually stay here running the class and have people participate from the audience and still have control up here. Okay? It's, it's the exact representation of the remote, right? How did you bring that up again? Just click on the little icon once, okay. show on screen remote. Okay, nice. That's it. That same thing, the touchpad still looks the same. Yep, so. totally. totally. Yep. Um, configure walk and talk is where you can make some changes, okay? I think we probably have to update your, the version you're using. Um, so you have some general stuff. It makes sounds and it enables automatic checks for updates. All right. Now that probably depends on how your firewall is set up and things like that. I don't know if it just will automatically download stuff or tell you. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. And, and uh, we did register your board last time I was here. So you should get alerts for uh, updates and things like that. Okay. Your save. Um, Save tab, here's where you have your file format options. So the different file formats, okay, PDF, bitmap, GIF, JPEG, um, PNG, TIFF, whatever you want. The default will always be JPEG. And it's always at 1600 resolution, all right? But as you see, even in JPEG, you've got two higher resolutions. So you can get pretty intense with what you're capturing. So, if, you know, like you were pointing out, you know, digital arts and things like that, they really love that because they can go into a bitmap, huge resolution, and take these gorgeous captures and actually be able to zoom into them or even blow them up, do a lot of things with them. Some people will take capture, 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 and then create a sequence or even a movie, bring it into um, some of the movie editing software. And you'll actually see the flow of a lesson or, or, or examples of content, right? Yeah. But even, you know, JPEG at 1600 is pretty good. The, you know, the captures we opened when Carmel was up here, um, they were only at 50%. You know, so you can get them up to 100% and they look pretty good. Uh, again, it defaults to the My Documents folder on the PC that it's connected to. You can browse and save it to, a, you can create a new folder on the desktop, you can go to the network folder, what, basically whatever that computer has access to or wherever you want to save it. So if an instructor wants to save it to a particular folder that he's capturing for that class for that semester, he can do that, he or she. Okay? Uh, and then if you want PDF files to save in landscape format, that's probably a good thing to, to actually do. Uh, otherwise, they'll be in portrait format, and so you'll get a smaller capture of the, of the content. Okay, so that's why I'd make that change. Drawing, uh, it will default to uh, black, looks like medium, as the startup style. You can change that, okay? So you can change that, and then that way, the next time you bring up the pen, that will be your default. Printing, you're really not doing that in here. So you don't even have to worry about that unless you set up a printer. And it'll go to any network printer, essentially. So any printer that that computer would be connected to, you can connect it to, all right? So it could be even in your office. If it's on, if it's on, it's on the network and you can map that computer to that printer, you're done, OK? Projection, you really don't have to worry about that because you actually have a lightning board. So it's the self-calibrating. Um, this is really important when, when you're fixing a board and a projector because what they'll do is they'll get a finite alignment on that and then you never have to worry about it again. And then hardware, you really should never have to worry about that um, unless something goes wrong with the board and tech support asks you to go there. Or if you ended up in a room where there were two devices, two boards, then what you could do from here actually is, on, is take the remote control and on the side of it, you'll have ABC setting. So you designate, you can have up to three devices in the same space without them interfering with each other. 
it gets interesting, let me tell you. In our San Francisco office, we have three devices. And if somebody switches this button to like B instead of C, and all of a sudden you're changing somebody else's pen to a cursor and just wreaking havoc. This is a Polyvision walk and talk board. Mm -hmm. um, and then my notes, as soon as I capture the cutoff on the sides, it's because by default that it's set up as a portrait, not landscape. Is that right? It should never cut it off. Okay. It will still capture the entire board. Uh -huh. um, what's critical about it being landscape instead of portrait is that it will give you a, 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 bigger cap a, a bigger image of the capture, a bigger f format, mm -hmm. right? So, so if, you take, if you take a rectangle that's sideways and you try to take that same picture and put it in something that's only this wide, mm -hmm. it's going to shrink it. It's compression. It's compression. compression. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you leave it in landscape, it's going to look pretty much exactly like this. Oh, I see. So, so by default, this was actually set up as, well, that checkbox was a check. So PDF, yeah, PDFs automatically go to portrait. It's because they're usually saving documents. That's what I was created for. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, so with PowerPoints and with a board that's in this format, more of a landscape format, you want to tell PDF capture this way. You should never have to have a, a PDF, a capture from this board go portrait. It defeats the purpose because you're not you're, you want it you want as you want as as big a picture as you possibly can of this square of this rectangle. So the thing that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. So the thing that you check is that um, preferences. So again, one click. There's a little icon down here at the bottom. It looks just like the board. Click on it once. Oh. Configure walk and talk, and it's in the um, save area. Yeah. Yes. Which, actually by default, not checked. Yeah. So it's checked now. It'll say checked unless you uncheck it. Okay. Yeah. There's only one user. I, there's, there's a generic password and login for this uh, computer, isn't there, Carmel? There's a, it's a generic login for this PC, or do people? They use their individuals? OK. That's important to know, because the next time somebody logs in and they're connecting to the board, more than likely that won't be checked. Because it's per user. Right. That might have been the problem with Flip, but it was saving you those JPEGs and they were getting all weird and weird. switched out. Yeah, I'm not sure what to, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. but we always want to make sure that it's I, it, it just creates, it look like that, ex yeah, exactly. It makes a better snapshot of it, for sure. Definitely. You're taking advantage of all the real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And again, you know, depending on what they're doing with it, they can change the file format. They can change the startup pen. Having per user settings is really nice because they really can customize their use of it. Where they're saving it, what the pen looks like, uh, all, all those things. This makes it nice. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. You'll, you'll have to have that USB cable connected to your laptop, and you'll also have to have the walk and talk driver on your laptop.